Hey guys, Interdaddy here, back with another Smite rant. Today's subject is the sumptuous suck machine of solitude, Broken Sandy. Wait, what? It's... it's 2020. What? What What do you mean I already made a barren rant? No, I... what? Okay, I've been informed this is meant to be a release history video and not a rant, so Interdaddy is going back to his cave and regular Intersect is taking over for the production of this video. Hope you enjoy. So if this is your first time watching, or you just need a refresher because it's been a while, because it definitely has, this series goes in depth on the release date of Smite Gods, any reworks they've undergone, and all the buffs and nerfs they've received throughout the years in Smite. Today's episode, as you most certainly will know if your IQ isn't less than your age, is going to be covering one of the most OP and frustrating releases of recent times, that of course being Baron Samdi. So let's dive right in with Baron's release stats and abilities. So with Baron being a fairly recent release compared to a lot of my other release history episodes, I'm sure a lot of you watching were around to experience this and know just how broken he was. If you're in that camp, this can serve as a chilling reminder of what high res is capable of, and if you've never experienced the suck machine in all his glory, this will be a wild ride for you. On June 26, 2018, in the midst of Season 5, Baron was released upon the world. So aside from his grossly overpowered passive that even to this day remains busted, we'll start with Baron's 1. This is the single part of his kit that wasn't designed by apes, but don't let that fool you, they use chimpanzees for this one instead. Okay, I'm only half joking. This ability was one of the more balanced parts of Baron's release kit in comparison to the rest, of course. Sure, 30% attack speed and 30% power reduction just for hitting this ability is a bit over the top, and that's where his broken passive comes in, of course. And it probably shouldn't have a 9 second base cooldown either, but if we ignore all that, it's a pretty basic wave clear and poke tool. With some small changes, this can definitely be made into a fair ability. Baron's 2, however, will do nothing of the sort. This has to be one of the most bloated abilities ever put into the game, period. By bloated, I don't necessarily mean it was hands down the best ability in the game, though it was close. I mean it did way too many things all at once for one single ability slot. Flat damage, scaling damage, flat healing, percent health healing, massive movement speed steroid, slow cleanse, immunity to slows. Seriously, give me a single other non-ultimate ability that does this much in terms of unique effects. You'll be hard pressed to find one, I'm sure. This ability alone was a huge reason for the rise of Tank Baron as well. Healing 15% of your health when your total health pool is 3000 is pretty good it turns out. And all this was for a measly 11 second cooldown once ranked up, so easily under 10 seconds once you get some CDR online. This ability alone made Baron pretty much immortal on release because of the insane healing, movement speed and slow immunity, making him impossible to lock down. Even if you did manage to get on top of this mage as an assassin, a scenario in which the assassin should be at an advantage, he just presses 2 on himself and creates a 60% health spike because this does one third of your health and heals one third of his. This ability was just straight up busted, arguably the most oppressive part of his kit and a huge reason for why many people hated him at launch. So moving on from one busted ability to another, because that's how Baron Sandy works, we have Wrap It Up. 2.5 seconds of CC that can spread to multiple targets and perfectly sets up the rest of his kit or his teammates. Sign me up. But on top of that, it also did very respectable damage at launch, which had to be severely nerfed in coming patches. The damage this ability was doing to people was deceptively strong. I think a lot of people blamed his other abilities and didn't realise that over 4 seconds of this ability ticking on you does a lot of damage. Oh, and did I also mention it pretty much instantly stacks his broken ass passive as well, so all of his other abilities do even more busted shit. Well, yes it does. And of course, it wouldn't be released Baron without a cooldown way too low for the power level of the ability, so the snake was on a flat 12 second cooldown, god knows why. By the time the actual CC of the ability has ended, it's got about 8 seconds left on its cooldown, buy some CDR, you can probably get it down as low as 6 seconds. That seems to be a theme with a lot of Baron's abilities at launch, they just had way too low cooldowns and often they didn't scale down either, they just started low in the early game, which is just a stupid idea. Solo, support, mid, hell even jungle or ADC, anywhere you put the suck machine at launch, this ability was scary as fuck. Doing insane damage for a carry style Baron, and having ridiculous CC for a support or solo style Baron, there's not much this ability didn't do at launch, and as we'll see in the nerf section, this ability was hit super hard in the months following Baron's release. Alright, let's move on to Baron's namesake, the Suck Machine, aka Life of the Party. And you know why he's the life of the party? Because he brings the 420 boys, let's go. Nah, just kidding, he's the life of the party because he sucks the life out of everyone else when you play against him. So this does tick damage, pretty respectable tick damage as well, but it also does burst damage, quite a bit at that. Oh, and it does percent max health damage because this is Baron Sandy and you know he has to have three different things when he should really just have one. Oh, but you can just jump out of this ability before it pulls you in, right? Nope. Considering this almost instantly stacks his passive and then he gives you the good suck and just ends your life. Once again, this ability works on literally any Baron playstyle. 
Good for support because of the ridiculous CC, pulling people in and then stunning one target for 2 seconds. Good for a mage build because of the insane damage from 3 different sources. Good for Bruiser Baron because you get the best of both worlds. Hell, you could probably build attack speed Baron and still wreck face with this ultimate release. It was absolutely ridiculous. Right, that was a long one because there's a lot of bullshit to explain about Baron's release, but let's get into the myriad of nerfs the Suck Machine has received in his one and a half years in Smite so far. So while I was researching for this video, I found out that Baron has literally only been buffed once since this release. Every other change that's been made to him has been either a bug fix or a nerf, and the bug fixes were often counted as nerfs as well. I know he is getting buffed in Season 7, but as of the recording of this video, that hasn't dropped yet, so I don't count it. So the first patch after Baron's release, 5.12, on July 9th, 2018, Baron was nerfed on 4 of his 5 abilities. Firstly, the passive was hit, rightfully so, reducing the ridiculous 25% damage bonus against max hysteria targets down to 20%, and fixing a bug where he randomly gained 10% extra magical power while using Baron's Brew. No idea how a bug like that even comes about, maybe they modelled it off of power potions and never changed it, who knows. But for whatever reason, he just did more damage at launch than he should have. Speaking of, the 1 was doing 15% more damage than listed on the tooltip, because why not? There's a lot of stuff like this where Release Baron was so damn strong even despite his fairly normal looking numbers, that's because the numbers were lies. Baron just had extra damage for no reason that none of us were told about. They also nerfed the actual listed damage numbers here as well though, taking some base damage and scaling off of this ability. Oh, and this was a huge one at release. If you tried to make a 200 IQ play and use a god with root immunity to counter Baron's 3, you just got fucked in the ass because high res don't know how to make a game. Yeah, even if you were root immune, this ability would still root you. I think it was because of the way it was programmed being a slow into a root, it counted the whole ability as a slow and so root immunity didn't block it and it didn't proc magize and things like that. And finally in this patch, they fixed an issue with casting the ult while taking some damage off the base, no biggie really. And of course, one of the biggest nerf patches to ever hit a god straight after release wasn't even close enough to take down the suck machine. Two weeks and one patch later on July 24th 2018, patch 513, more nerfs and changes hit Baron. The one was once again nerfed both in base damage and scaling, this really just shows how nuts this was at release, especially with the bonus damage that it was doing that none of us were told about. Some healing was taken off the two, not like it mattered, it still healed way too much and gave a shit ton of other benefits. And the three was made into its own type of CC to be clear exactly what it does. More nerfs in subsequent patches came throughout the rest of season 5 for Baron, hitting the ultimate along with some tweaks and nerfs to his two and a cooldown increase on his three. And the final carriage of this nerf train came with the launch of season 6 in which some of Baron's ridiculous percent values were hit. Honestly, this chain of nerfs really just shows you that hi res realised how badly they fucked up with this release and didn't even care if they nuked him from orbit and made him C tier. This is probably top 5 in terms of the hardest series of nerfs a god has ever received at release. Obviously, not quite on release ground level, but definitely getting up there. This is one of the most powerful releases I've ever covered on this series. After all this flack, Baron has remained a mediocre, if not slightly underpowered character for the entirety of Season 6. I think Titan want to give people a break from him. Even if they wanted to buff him, the community backlash would be severe and the memories of the release suck machine are still fresh in our minds. But Baron is on the up and up once again. With a small mana buff in early Season 6 and buffs planned for release in Season 7, we might just see the return of Baron in the new season. Hopefully in a more fun and balanced form than we've seen him in the past. But that's it for Baron's release history. A surprising amount to talk about given his relatively short history in Smite. Short but not uneventful is how I would sum up his history. Let me know your thoughts and or stories of the Suck Machine and his release date down below. And of course, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Peace.